Right, sleep time at 15.9 hours per day for newborn babies, the 10 percentile of the distribution of sleep times for all newborn. So if we assume that distribution is normal and standard deviation is 0.5 hours, it's approximately what does it mean sleep time in hours per day for newborn babies? All right, so let's, um, let's go back and remember what standardized Z score is. And that would be equal to the data value or X minus the mean over the standard deviation. And in this case, we want to find the, the, the Z value, the standardized value of a normal distribution without, we don't know the mean, we know standard deviation is 0.5, but with 0.1, oh, sorry, 0.1 area cell left. So we want to find a corresponding Z value. That, that's what it means to be a 10 percentile. So for this, we can use our calculator and use the inverse norm function, go to distribution, inverse norm, and all you have to type is the area to the left, which is 0.1. If you don't type anything else, this will just assume that the mean standard deviation is 0 and 1. So it's meaning that standardized normal curve. So we have that um, the z value here and the standard normal curve is negative 1.28. So we can set up an equation where we have negative 1.28 as z equal to our x value will be 15.9 minus the mean. I mean, that's what we're solving for, divided by the standard deviation, which is 0.5. So we just, we just solved this algebraic equation. Multiply both sides by 0 0.5 times 0.5. And then subtract 15.9. So we'll have negative 16.54 is negative mean, is negative mu, or the negative value of the mean. So the mean would be 16.54ish. And so it'll be about, it'll be D. All right, problem 15. As part of a science experiment, a student recorded 10 measurements of the temperature of a liquid. One of the measurements was an outlier when compared with the other nine measurements. Which of the following must be true about the nine measurements, excluding the outlier, when compared to the, with the other 10 measurements? No, an outlier is any number that's greater than the upper quartile or less than the lower quartile by at least 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, so this is like a logic problem. So um, let's see what, how this works. So the meaning of the nine measurements is less than the meaning of the 10 measurements. Um, no, <laughs> well, you could have them, they could all have the same median, median, um, like an example would, um, you could have, okay, let's have like an, an, an example. You can have like values one, two, 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 you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos. And the other value was 90. So you have, these are your 10 data values. The median would be two still. The median would be two. If you took away the 90, the median of these values, these nine values would still be the same. So it wouldn't, it's not necessarily gonna be less. So it wouldn't be A. The median of the nine measures is greater than the, me is greater than the median. So that same, same idea. If, if I, again, I, I'm, I'm just using an arbitrary example because all you need to do is have one example to prove that it's wrong. Because so it says must be true. So this is not gonna work either. The maximum of the nine measurements is less than the maximum of the 10 measurements. Um, well, no, because the outlier could be on to the B. Again, this is a good example. And the outlier could be 90. So the maximum of these nine is Actually, no. So the maximum of these nine would be two. The maximum of the 10 would be 90. But what if you had like the outlier, what if you had the outlier as like negative, negative, like negative, like 90. So then if we take away this outlier, you would still have all these values left. The maximum would still be two. So then it wouldn't be that's less. And vice versa. That, so this one is when it's greater than. So like, again, if I had it this way and took away the 90, then this is this max, this two is not greater than that 90. And then we're left with E and that's gonna be our answer. 
And this is going to be our answer. Um, so if we understand standard deviation as a measure of spread, if we take away the biggest value or the smallest value, that means there's going to be less spread left between the nine values. So standard deviation is going to be smaller when you take out the outliers. Here's 16. Um, at a local ice cream store, 210 people were surveyed on whether they prefer eating ice cream from a cone or from a cup. The 210 surveyed, 70 were adults and 140 were children. Of the responses, 150 indicated the cone as preferred method of eating ice cream. For those surveyed, there is no association between age and preferred method of eating ice cream. Which of these tables shows this? Okay, so for there to be no association, that means the proportion um, of adults that prefer eating ice cream with the cone is going to be the same as the proportion of the kids eating ice cream with the cone. So we're going to look at proportions because since it's, the sample sizes are different, so we got to look at proportions. So um, if we had, um, let me just, let's just make another table. So it's the cone, cup, total. Adults, children, total again. So um, there's 210 total. 150 said they for mean eating the cone type of ice cream style. Mm -hmm. That means 60 of them like the cup. So those have to add to 110. There were 140 children, and that means there's 70 adults. It says that. And so then, if the proportions are going to be the same of the cone and the cup, what you would do is you're going to take what proportion of 150 is 210. What proportion of 210 is, is 150? So we have 150 over 210. And that's about 0.71714. So the values in here are have to be 0.714 of the adult population and 0.714 of the child population because the proportion is what we care about. The proportion would be the same. So we do this times 70. Nope, that's wrong. Point seven one four times 70. That's probably going to be 50 because we have to get a whole number. That means there's going to be 100 here. Then we put 20 here. That adds up 70 and then 40 here. So again, proportionally, see, since the sample size of adults is twice or is half the size of the child's, these values are going to be half the ones here. So then the one, let's see, the closest one to this would be C, exactly that. So our answer would be C. So focus on the proportions in this problem. All right, two-sided t-test for a population mean is conducted for the null hypothesis. HO for the mu is equal to 100. If a 90% confidence interval, or 90% t interval constructed from the same sample data contains the value of 100, which the following can be concluded about the test of significance of alpha. Okay, so I mean, I I'm gonna explain this verbally, but I'll draw a picture. Um, if if we make a ninety percent confidence interval, that means there's ten percent left over, five percent um, to the left and right. So it's a it's actually just drawn a normal curve. So let's go up and this is ninety percent in the middle. That means there's five percent over here. 5% over there. And remember, we're doing a two sided test. And if we make this 90% common interval and it contains 100, that means 100 is somewhere in here. We don't know where it is. It could be here, here, it could be in the center, anywhere in here. Now, um, if it's in the 90% confidence interval, that means that it's a plausible value. So if it's a plausible, if we, if we have, uh, if it's a plausible value, then we don't have statistical or we don't have significant evidence to say that the 100 is not, you know, the true mean. 
Because if it wasn't the true, if it wasn't a plausible value, then it wouldn't be a 90% confidence interval. It would be outside. So both the significance tests and um, and confidence intervals work pretty well together because they are they they um are based exactly on the same values, but they're 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 like looking at it in a different way. Um, so again, make sure that if this if the alpha level plus the confidence interval add up to 100, then you know that if then you know that if the if the population or if the null hypothesis is in here. That means it's a plausible value, so you're going to fail to reject it. If it's not in here, if it's in here or here, that means it's going to, it's going to be, you know, kind of your, like in your significance test, it's going to be um, less than your alpha level. So then you're going to fail, so then you're going to reject it. In this case, since the 100 is going to be in here, we're going to fail, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p value then is going to be more than 10%. So, 17, would be d. Eighteen. Agriculturists, agriculturalness. I don't know if I can pronounce that, but anyway, so working with an Australian pine trees, wanted to investigate the relationship between the age and the height of an Australian pine. Okay. A random sample of Australian pine trees was selected and the age and years and, and the height in meters was reported for each tree in the sample. Based on the recorded data, the agriculturalist agriculturalist created a Following regression equation, predict the height of meters of the Australian pine based on the age and years of the tree. I should follow the best interpretation of the slope of the regression line. Okay, so we're getting our predicted height, think of that as like your y hat, from your age. Your, think of that as your x. So um, we would say that as the age goes up by one, the predicted height would increase by 0.48 meters. So with the best interpretation of that, let's see what that would be. On average, nope, we, remember we want, as age goes up by one, the height goes up by 0.48 meters. So on average, so yeah, it, it would be, looks like B, let's just look at the other ones to make sure as height increases on average. No, it's definitely not gonna be C because this is the Y intercept. It's not describe rate of change as the height increases on that. Nope, not 0.29 again. Actual no, it's yeah. Forget about those. Answer is B. All right, at a certain store distribution of weights of cartons of large eggs is approximately normal with mean 26 ounces. Based on the distribution, which of the following intervals will contain the greatest proportion of cartons of large eggs at the store? So, um, all of these look like they're four. Um, four units in mean. So, okay, so we have a distribution that's approximately normal. The mean is told to be 26. So, the means are right in the center. Okay, so. Since this is a normal curve, we know that if we if all see if we have um, spreads of four all across, you're going to capture the most area if your spread of four is centered at 26, because that's how a bell curve works. That's how the normal distribution is, you know, is you know, shaped. So if we went two below 22 or no 24, and two above 28, this would be the biggest area of four so let's see we got 22 yeah looks like it's going to be b or not b so 24 to 28 you have to see this is center at 26. this doesn't have the greatest proportion it doesn't have the greatest area on the curve 